TikTok who? Oh her, oh hammer, blip blip blip. What is that? Star Wars type of, what is going on? Well, hi, this is Editing Rachel. Welcome to this episode. I wanted to say thank you for your patience. We have roughly two more episodes of things like this, and then we're back into full makeovers. I just have been feeling like I've been missing something, and that's makeovers. So I'm really excited to say that with these like four essential videos down for me to now refer to moving forward, we're gonna start to kind of breeze through the house a little bit, which is very exciting. But also, I will be consistently inconsistent moving forward because now these projects are just, they're massive and I might not be posting every single week on YouTube, but I will be posting on stories and I wanna do lives more. Now that we have like literally the foundation beneath us, the walls up in the bar, uh, it kinda just feels like I'm good to just like go forward with showing you my true interior design brain, which I'm very excited for. I can't wait to begin back to showing you rooms and furniture and builds. Yeah, just show you like full rooms or full ideas. So anywho, let's jump into this episode. I love you very much. Okay, I just know, I just wanted to, okay, bye bye. The reason I wanted to do this bar last, quite frankly, is because I was avoiding redoing the roof portion. A very overwhelming project. That is definitely not okay to breathe in. In the previous episode, I actually demoed and then did the subflooring to this outdoor bar and realized that it trickled and that the roof was puddling up top and I needed to replace that. So that's what this episode is about. First thing is first, and I had to pick up materials and you know, lumber prices are not cheap right now. So just for the first round for the covering of the roof and the two by fours that I needed, I spent $408. How did I realize what materials to grab while well, I did my research, right? I just needed to look into what roof I had currently, which was a very basic flat roof. And I wanted to add a pitch to it for water runoff to have what happened before not happen again. I really am falling in love with this desert community because my neighbor, Zach, shout out, he actually saw over on my Instagram stories that I was about to work on the roof and he just finished doing an exact roof like mine and had extra primer and materials I could use. Talk about my life being a movie. So Zach, the boyfriend of the daughter of the house that I own, he is literally doing roofing and has a bunch of extra primer and has given me all the tips and tricks to do this type of roofing. I'm really excited. So I'm gonna go pick up some free primer because we love a good budget saving anywhere we can. Um, but I need to find his house first. We're in the middle of nowhere. Oh, this is what I look like right now. Fun. Let's get to it. It's going to look like I'm doing things backwards and that is because this is my first time doing any of the things you're seeing that I am doing in this room. So you can learn from my mistakes and I am going to learn as well, which will teach me when to hire out moving forward on the rest of my property. Demoing the roof was a bit interesting because it wasn't the strongest to be standing on and I wanted to loosen up the nails underneath to the two by fours to remove those and then remove the roof separately since everything is a little bit beefy and big for this one woman show over here, I needed to break it down, like I always say, in digestible chunks. Even though that's not a very flattering term right next to each other like that, jeez. All right. <laughs> this is how we're gonna do it. I seem to really pick the greatest weather to do all these projects, but I know that I'll learn the weather and how it flows the more that I live out here, but you know, trial and error people. Anyways, I demoed off the roof completely before adding a two by four to the right hand side to raise it up just a little bit to run off the back of the bar. Once the roof was clear, I, again, just kind of looked at the grand scheme of things, took note of what was there before and purchased new ones. So these two by four joist braces, I just replaced where they were since that was working. I just needed to add a pitch to remove that water to make sure that it doesn't divot in again. So I just hammered in those braces where they were before and then they were a little bit raised on the right hand side because we added that two by four previously. A couple of my buddy Skull and Spade and Modern Builds roofing videos as well they added in between supports, so I copied them there. I'm just kind of learning from the previous carpenters work and my friends that are in my community. 
I loaded up my three sheets of CDX, they're each four by eight, and I just laid that across the roof accordingly. Now, there are going to be a lot of mistakes that you will be seeing like real time happening and I will have to be reflecting on. And given the prices of lumber, I just decided to move forward with this roof as is because if you haven't caught it, I didn't put the right side down. I, again, am so new to this and I know it says this side down, but when you're just kind of moving in a project and you start to screw the roof in, I'm not really paying attention to that until I step back a little bit too late, if you will. And I just wanted to avoid having to spend another $400. Um, and I know that might sound a little bit weird, but it's just the truth. And I want to be completely honest with you. Because I added that little pitch, I just need to fill in a two by four right there and secure the edges. But we got a roof, people. We got a roof. I moved forward with adding this primer and I have to be honest, throughout the research I did online, I didn't see this as a step, but Zach gave me this tip along with a couple other things that I was just going to utilize since he's lived out here his whole life. He has done this a bunch of times, he knows what works. So I added the primer and then after that is when we will be adding our base sheet. A couple of things, I let the primer dry overnight and then Woodbrain came the next day to help me, which I love. Number two, that primer was at a roofing supply store. It was not available at my local Home Depot. However, the base sheet and these nails that I am using now, well, Lindsay is using to then hammer pretty aggressively throughout the entire roof, starting at the base where it is the lowest point and then overlapping them sheet by sheet to make sure that like no water can get underneath. That is available at Home Depot. You see the roof bows, but that is because I added that pitch and I have not yet added the support underneath on that side to make it completely flush, secure, and sturdy. So Lindsay's over here doing the roof because she's just excited to work. And then Mr. Brett all the way over there shopping my land. We're gonna do an episode soon of inventory that is on my land. Number one, he's gonna get the stuff to work with and then I'll get the stuff to work with and Lindsay will get the stuff to work with. But then outside of that, we'll sell everything. But we're gonna do a whole property walkthrough, which he's already walking through because he needs things for his step that's going to the deck that he's done, which I will card here for you. Or if it's not there, I will put on my community tab so you see him doing it. But look at him just out there moseying about. <laughs> Unearthing treasures. What is that? <laughs> Do it. Tick tock who? Oh her. Oh hammer. Blip, blip, blip. And then Brett is over here shopping my land. What it what was it? What is it? <laughs> What in the world? What is that Star Wars type of, what is going on? You can have it. <laughs> I was going to do things the harder, more traditional way, like painting on adhesive and then rolling a sheet of roofing that is not self-adhesive, but Zach gave me that tip that there was a roofing supply company fairly close and that would save me a ton of time by purchasing self-adhesive roofing. And I highly recommend. Lindsay. <laughs> What happened? Explain to them now. Explain. What happened? <laughs> you said she'll be coming around the mountain when she what? Paul? I'll be coming around that corner when she comes. I'm going to help you. One. Are we doing it? Oh, yeah. How are we going to I look like I'm not a good friend. I'm just. <laughs> are you going to backwards? I'm oh. laughing. I can't. I can't get this solo. Here. Well, the, oh, the center's coming out. Um, I guess you're welcome for whatever that was. Holy moly. I love our friendship, Miss Woodbrain. I love you very much. Anyway, so we move forward with getting that up onto the roof and then cutting down the first piece to size. But thank goodness, Lindsay and I caught this before moving forward. You want to add your flashing, which is like this metal corner to give it that extra protection before you lay that top 
roofing. I thought that was interesting, but after researching it, that is how you do it. Uh, Mr. Dennis, he had it backwards. He had the flashing on top of the roofing, which I guess you actually want to avoid. Once we added the flashing to the entire surrounding of the roof, the edging of the roof, if you will, we moved forward with laying down the first sheet. Again, you're gonna work from the quote unquote base of the roof, which is gonna be like the lowest pitch, the lowest side. And for me, for the self-adhesive roof roll, there is this like black adhesive stripe essentially going off the top, which you can see. That you want to be um, pointing upwards, not at the base of the roof because you will be layering the other pieces on top of that. I am going to let you know that the buddy system is an absolute non-negotiable because I learned the hard way trying to do the last piece by myself, but we'll dive into that in a second. You want to make sure that the edge of the roof and the edge of that piece line up perfectly before you pull off the self-adhesive backing to create that insane stickiness and lay down half by half. And again, having a friend is incredibly helpful because you guys can kind of go at the same time versus trying to do what I did a little later. Oh, and this thing just sticks like no other. So you want to make sure that you get it the first time. And that sounds really crazy, but you actually, and again, I'm going to say it's non-negotiable. <laughs> we peeled the covering to the sticky black part before we laid the second piece down, repeated that same process and smoothed it out with our feet the best that we could. Okay. Fun fact, I'm probably the most pissed off I've ever been because I went to a roofing wholesale place, right? And we did the calculations for the roof. The guy that works there told me one roll. Fun fact, one roll doesn't cover my roof. So now I have to go back on Monday, which seems like a first world problem, but it's an hour both ways. It's so inconvenient. And we were gonna get the roof done today and now we're not, so. I know I sound like I'm whining, but it's like stuff like that that instantly can deflate you from a project. I had to persevere though. So Sunday, they were closed, popped in on Monday, grabbed another roll by myself, cut it down in my truck to size before moving it up to the roof because we learned the hard way before. And now I'm gonna show you actually how hard it was. Even though this is a very small roof, I'm excited to be testing everything out with this space to learn what I do and do not want to do moving forward. But it was so hard, even with a smaller sheet such as this. And that's why you do it with two people. <laughs> goodness I managed to straighten it out and I learned the hard way but the next side the other half that I did I just folded down the middle first and then took my feet to do each side evenly so it didn't ripple it was nice and flat and it was way easier to install that way I don't know why I tried to flip it all in one big hoof I trimmed the excess with a carpenter's knife it is just something that can get nice up and flush to the flashing and I'll handle like the black melt out from the stickiness and adhesive a little bit later I just wanted to move forward with getting this completely out of my way by sweeping the top of it and then adding a roof sealant the roof sealant again was recommended to me by friends that live out here a little bit more research with people that have roofs out here and also when I did the walkthrough to my house they mentioned adding a coat of that to even my main roof in my main house because it would just help exponentially. So that's exactly what I did. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon is really disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everybody. Their wireless earbuds start at half the price of other premium audio brands. They give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit, which I love. It truly does make me zone into what I'm doing. They offer their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit option and no dangling wires or stems, which you all know the pain of when you're walking through your house and your cord gets stuck on a doorknob, it just gets you that much more frustrated. We don't need that. You see me wearing the blue pair of their Raycon Everyday earbuds, which I actually love the pop of color. It makes it very easy to find since your girl loses everything every five seconds. If you guys are interested in popping Raycon earbuds into your beautiful ears, you can click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Mets to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Not me matching my Raycons. Oh, so adorable. Welcome back to Rachel Metz. Still has no clue how to do proper audio. So hopefully this is good for you guys and the wind is coming directly this way. Fun stuff. We are here to take all the nails and screws out of the walls and then hopefully just start to wire new electrical and show you how to do that. Cause it's actually fairly easy since we're here at this state. I'm going to put my Raycon earbuds in. Thank you, Raycon. And zone out to a nice audiobook and sit here and do some tedious work. Such as 
the 50,000 screws. Rachel, snap out of it. I'm snapping out of it, I promise. It's just, you know, I just wanna have fun. I just wanna decorate. I just wanna make everything over. We're not quite there yet. Before you go ripping out your current electrical, you wanna make sure that you have no electricity running through these wires. And I know that there is none because I have to do a massive overhaul of the entire electrical <laughs> throughout the property. So there's no electricity running through here right now. So I just move forward with ripping out the old wires, the old outlet boxes, and basically redoing again what he did before, just making it new and fresh. People may be confused why I'm not doing the roll insulation. It wasn't here to begin with, so I am not going to be doing that. I will be going in and just using spray insulation where I see fit, but I'll be focusing insulating like the trailer guest house versus this pool bar that we're not really gonna be in too much. It's more to just lounge really quickly and head out. But I do, if you want to, please by all means insulate no matter what size room you have. I just didn't do that here. Started placing outlet boxes where I was thinking I wanted electricity to be run to and then I used the cords accordingly not funny there to what I thought was going to be run there so let me put in the most basic terms because I am not good with electricity and moving forward I will definitely hire out like I am with this major job that I will definitely record and document for you the yellow cord is for appliances something that requires more power the white cord is more for like light fixtures and things that don't require a lot of power a lot of voltage if you will. Now all the cords are running to that open hole where the mini fridge used to be because that is the space where the new breaker for this outdoor bar is going to be. So everything that I'm wiring, whether it's for a switch or for an outlet, it is going directly to that box. I'm just overhanging it there for the professionals to come in and do what they do best and make it work. I mentioned before I'm not a pro with electricity and I'm going to tell you I replaced those outlet boxes to the proper ones because the front lip ones I guess are not the right ones but I did want to showcase where I put new ones holy moly I get from the before to the most current stage it almost looks worse but I'm excited to be able to have the opportunity to break down a room that is a smaller size and learn those basics and show you how a DIY version can be done but also teach you where I don't want to be doing these things moving forward but I'm glad that I'm giving them a go. Episode one, we demoed the room and we did the subfloor. Episode two, we have now prepped for electrical and replaced the roof, which hopefully you don't have to replace your roof. Now episode three, which is done and I'm staring at it and it's gorgeous, is brand new drywall and design, which I think you guys are gonna be a little thrown off with my actual interior design taste. I cannot wait to show you. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I know I shouldn't be apologizing for these episodes that are on the more like basic home improvement side of things. I just personally cannot wait to get back into full fledged makeovers. I love you guys so much. I will see you very soon for this next DIY. I need to secure that flashing and touch up the paint, but there we go. She's new. Oh boy, what a journey.